Hello, and welcome to the Weekly Watch podcast series. I'm John Briggs, Global Head of Debt Strategy. This series helps you cut through the noise of global financial markets with a quick take on the upcoming trends to watch. Hello, everyone. This past week held nowhere near the fireworks of the first week of the year, which saw yield rises of between 20 to 30 basis points in major bond markets and volatility strike risk assets. This past week was much calmer, where two events that may have previously caused market tantrums did not those being Powell's testimony, solidifying the Fed's plans to raise rates this year and run down the balance sheet, and a slightly stronger than expected CPI report. So we know inflation has been a major driver of policy across the world, but that did little to move markets. Now, we'll get back to those both those subjects in a minute, but what this tells me is that markets may have, for now, at least adjusted to the near-term higher policy path. If so, this means that we could see markets actually continue to settle into some ranges for the near term. Indeed, investors in that case may return to some riskier assets looking for return and carry. It's one thing when you walk in and start 2022 with yield soaring, but if bond markets can settle down, especially um, showing that they're handling information that had previously caused some volatility, yeah, there's a gives you a sense that risk and currency markets could take some cover, comfort and we could see some you know, new positions being deployed. I do want to caution, however, that we continue to feel that the early part of 2022 will continue to contain overall higher level of volatility across asset classes. I think we've adjusted for now to the Fed and likely the Bank of England rate path for the next few quarters. But we continue to see a future challenge if, and in our view for the US, when inflation does not come down as much as hoped, the markets start to worry about terminal rates, not just what happens this year with policy, but where policy goes over the long haul. So on that, I have Kevin Cummins with me today. He's our chief U.S. economist. Kevin, your higher inflation forecast has been a bedrock of our market views for most of 2021 and is just as important for 2022. I hinted just now we do not see inflation coming down as much as others hope, including the Fed, I would say. So fill us all in. What is the time period people are looking for, looking to for when inflation should fall back? And why do we see it being sticky and not falling back? Uh, yeah, well, we had another obviously strong December uh, CPI report, as you mentioned. Um, and I think for the time being, you know, we are expecting that inflation is going to continue to creep higher. So that 7% year on year pace for the overall index for the CPI and the 5.5% uh, reported rate in December is likely to continue to inch up in early this year. Um, it will, however, because of base effects, start to come off. So, you know, there may be some speculation that we've peaked and, and things are going to decelerate. Um, but in our forecast, we only show it uh, kind of moderating and going sideways over the summer months before um, slowing a little bit further by the end of this year. But, you know, I, I think what uh, people are expecting is that inflation will go back towards the Fed's 2% or so goal. And uh, in our forecast, we have it remaining uncomfortably high above 3% by the end of this year. So, you know, I think the, the big thing from our forecast relative to say the Fed's own forecast, which they nudged up obviously in December and has led to a lot of speculation about uh, rate hikes earlier this year than what was assumed heading into that December meeting, um, is that we're expecting a shift from uh, core goods prices, which we saw uh, throughout the pandemic, you know, a lot of spending was on, on the good side and, and services was, was weak as the labor market really slowed. But we think that, you know, tightness in the labor market, we should start to see wage pressures starting to build. We've already got some evidence of that um, in the third quarter of last year. If you look at just the ECI, um, that rate uh, that it accelerated for wages and salaries for private sector workers was the highest in the history of the survey. So I think, you know, last week's uh, jobs report indicated, you know, broad base average hourly earnings gains. And this is likely to filter through to the core services side of inflation. And if you look at inflation, the Fed's preferred measure of core inflation, uh, the core PCE price index, core goods only makes up about a quarter of the index. The rest of it is core services. So you have a look at rents uh, and wage growth. Those are likely to kind of take the baton from the upward push that we got on core goods. Some of that is likely to moderate as these supply chains uh, work themselves out later this year, perhaps. But we are likely to see uh, a shift on the core 
services side, which is likely to keep inflation elevated, probably above what most expect. I think that last bit you said there is actually pretty important where, you know, so the shift from goods and supply chain pressures and the stuff we saw a lot that caused a lot of inflation, you know, into the end, or I say into the fall, into the end of last year, you know, transitioning to more of a broad based service wage, you know, kind of driven among other things, inflation. So, you know, again, with Powell saying, oh, the supply side should clean up and they should get better. You know, if that is the case, that's a little discomforting, I think for inflation, the people who think inflation is going to come down. Um, all right, so we have three hikes and quantitative tightening in our forecast for this year. But as I noted, the next problem for the markets, in my view, because again, we feel like we've kind of gotten there, we're, fully we're not, maybe not fully priced, we're well priced for that, is likely to stem from terminal policy rates in several countries. So for the, uh, for the US, where do you see the eventual path for policy for the Fed beyond this year? Yeah, so I, I think, you know, we have kind of a consensus forecast with regard to the number of rate hikes that we have this year at three. You know, the Fed obviously expects three from their dot plot. Um, and we also have, you know, QT um, being starting to be implemented or perhaps likely to be implemented sometime over the summer. We've, we've kind of softly penciled it in for September. So, you know, there's action at each of those quarterly meetings. Um, but I think what most market participants expect the Fed to have a pretty short tightening cycle um, relative to history. Uh, the Fed's own forecast is that the funds rate, you know, a neutral level is somewhere around two and a half percent. The Fed um, forecast doesn't show any sort of restrictive policy above that level uh, in their own dot plot. But I think the risk is probably to the upside of that. You know, we have, as I mentioned, three hikes this year. I am assuming, if anything, if, if we're wrong, it, it's perhaps a quicker pace of rate hikes than, than potentially people expect that they could begin to increase it and mainly reflective of the fact that there's you know tightness in the labor market and this inflation doesn't come down. So they may have to step up their pace of, um, of hikes. So I think if anything, the risk is on the higher side of that two and a half percent. You know, it, it, something along the lines of you know three percent terminal funds rate seems reasonable to me. Given the inflation backdrop and and that they have a lot a lot, a lot of room to go here because rates are at such a low level right now. All right, so this is putting on the distant forecaster hat. So, um, do you think that if we get to that point where the Fed actually gets to go restrictive, that that's going to cause a recession or a policy mistake, or is it just too many uncertainties to even really forecast? Yeah, it's obviously a. a potentially a couple of years down the road. So it's, it's hard to tell, but um, you know, if, if inflation were to really surprise on the upside and we're wrong and inflation goes, you know, to 4% by the end of this year, rather than 3% and, and continues to move higher because of more persistence. And we see an unraveling of inflation expectations. I think that does increase the risk that, you know, down the road, once they, uh, were to react to that sort of uh, scenario that it certainly in would increase the risk that your economy is going to potentially teeter on the brink of a recession. Yeah, so inflation is going to be the determining factor. I think that's consistent with even some of the more dovish members. I mean, this morning, uh, you know, even uh, Brainerd is talking about the focus for the Fed is on inflation. And I don't think that's likely to change anytime soon, given the fact that we're, we're likely to see more persistence there. And, and inflation expectations obviously will be very critical, you know, over the course of the year to see how quickly the Fed's going to need to react. Because if they do start to, you know, if the markets do start to lose faith in their credibility here, um, we could see faster rate hikes uh, sooner than perhaps uh, most expect. Yeah, a great point on the inflation expectations side. You know, we focus a lot on kind of what inflation is doing now, but where people think it's going to be embedded for the future is, is also key. So appreciate that. But thanks for letting me put you on the spot for some of those. Um, so again, just kind of wrapping this up with my earlier comments, we may see some stability here in the near term, but I'm not sure this is going to be smooth sailing for too long, especially if we continue to see this persistence on the inflation side. So caution still warranted. But that's it for this week. Next week, we're focusing on European survey data, ECB accounts of their December meeting, and there's some Chinese activity data. 
uh, which could be interesting as far as you know the balance between growth um, between Asia and the US, UK, and Europe. Um, otherwise, it's pretty quiet and perhaps as noted, that brings some calm, but for now. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of the Weekly Watch. Please subscribe to our channel to get future episodes. We also encourage you to explore more of our content on our website and other social media channels.